welcome back to Between the Pages. I'm your host, Grace Randolph, and we're reporting to you from Midtown Comics in Times Square. And joining me once again is Alan Kistler. Alan is uh, agent of style at Newsarama and also Crazy Sexy Geeks here on YouTube and the writer of the unofficial Game of Thrones cookbook, which is out now. Yes. Right? Today we're continuing our series talking about comic book characters to film. The whole journey, getting you to know their backgrounds so that when you see them on screen, you know what's going on. So who are we talking about today? Loki. Yes, the character more likable in any form but his own. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Right? Although, uh, I think kudos to Tom Hiddleston. I think he's done a lot for this character. I think Tom Hiddleston is a fantastic Loki. I think Isn't he did he? such a good job in the movie Thor. That is like Kenneth Branagh's one gift to the franchise. Besides making a good movie, he cast him. And I think that of all the characters we've talked about, I think that this is the one instance where the movie has helped the character. I think so. I think it's brought him back into the spotlight in a big way. Yeah. And I, when I was uh, watching Thor with friends who never read the comics, I mean, they were asking me more about Loki than Thor. Like, you know, is Loki a big character in the comics? Like, are there a lot of stories with him and Thor? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, there, there are miniseries, there are specials. Like, yeah, he's all over the place. No, I think he's super cool. And I think, uh, I think that's what helps Thor maybe a little bit over the Captain America. I think that he is such a great villain now. Yeah. I think that they've given him that iconic villain that you need, you know? Well, it's a little more of a complex villain. Well, also, there's always that chance for redemption, I think. Just right, like, which is what Thor hopes for. Yeah, which makes him, as you said, a more complicated villain. Oh, and also, it, it brings into mind, which is one of the great things about him being a half-brother, I mm -hmm. mean, rather, a step-brother in the comics and, and this fictional uh, idea of it. He could have been like Thor. Yeah. Like, they're not that far apart from each other. Mm -hmm. Like, he is part of this house. He was adopted into this royal house. Well, that's also what's cool, the royal intrigue part. I think people love that kind of stuff, and it's the typical second brother syndrome. Right. You know, like, Loki did nothing wrong but come in second, and it's just, that's the way it goes. But right. I think what's interesting, you could totally see someone like Hugo Weaving playing Loki. Sure. That's what we were basing it on the comic book version. Sure. Or he's, he's just instantly more sinister. Well, I mean, the, the original myth, of course, uh, does have Loki in Norse mythology. Yeah, he's a real um, Norse god. Right, he was, he was the god of mischief, and he, was an ally or enemy to Thor, kind of depending on the story. Uh, they were not stepbrothers in the original mythology. Mm -hmm. he's, he's actually considered more of like a, an uncle of sorts. He was more a contemporary to Odin, so like he was sort of considered a brother in, in arms to Odin, and so Thor saw him as his trickster so uncle. So it's the whole Hercules to the family kind of relationship, right? right you, yeah, yeah you, could, you could definitely see that. And uh, Loki, I mean, if you look in the law of the myths, his mischief was just plain that mischief, or he would help out Thor, but still somehow get a dig in. Like, he, literally, there's a story where he tells Thor, the only way we can do this is if you dress up like a woman and pretend to get married to this guy. <laughs> and, and Thor has to do that. And the plan works. They really did that in the comic? That's fantastic. Th th this, was, this was in mythology. This is in oh, mythology. This is old in mythology. Even more hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I guess cross dressing has been funny forever. Exactly. <laughs> It's interesting that Loki was such a key villain. Like he was the first, the first Avengers number one. He was the villain. Yes, absolutely. But yet never really caught on. I think in the comics. But again, what does he do? Does he go to New York and start attacking? No, he convinces a group of heroes. Well, in to... the comic, he doesn't do that. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. But like in in the yeah, first Avengers true. comic, he's trying to get the Hulk and Thor to fight because he thinks the Hulk can beat up Thor. So he tricks and, him. Yeah. And he, so he again tricks them with illusions. To thinking the Hulk's on a rampage, and so Thor I think Thor that is going to be in the movie a little bit, but that was the whole that was the main focus of the comic. Yeah, right, that's right, what right. We did. And in the end, Thor realizes, oh, this is Loki's thing, and he goes and fights Loki by himself, and is able to defeat Loki by himself, while the other heroes who showed that's up. That's never hard for Thor. Yeah, not terribly. I mean, they they've even made it uh, kind of a comedic aspect of their relationship, how easily Thor can beat up Loki at yeah. times. Like, there's uh, a classic Simonson story from the '80s where. Loki's kind of gloating about, yeah, you beat my scheme, but I did get you there. And then Thor responds by picking up his hammer and breaking Loki's arm. <sighs> and just walks out. And just like, you know, yeah, deal with that. I'm still <laughs> Thor. Yeah. And I beat you. I think he was never helped in the animated shows. They would have him have like a cackling voice. He would be very right. much like the Green Goblin meets the Joker. But yet... And again, not, behind the scenes. Yeah, 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 but not that threatening. He right. was just more like kind of creepy. You right. know, like he had that vibe. Uh, and I think that, I think in the comic, he did, even in the comic, I think what really captured fans' attention was when he became a woman. That was a really interesting new take. The, it was. the idea was that Asgard had been destroyed at the end of uh, a Thor series, and then 
a couple of years later, they brought back Thor, and Asgard was being reborn, and a lot of people were being, a lot of the Asgardians were being reborn in human souls, human yeah. bodies, and Loki had manipulated things that he was reborn looking like uh, Sif. Thor. Sans eyebrows. Right, Thor, Thor's former lover and, and comrade in arms. You know, it's which, very, it's very creepy when we talk about it, yeah. but I mean, for some reason it worked and was, it was interesting. It yeah. was very interesting. Yeah, uh, he later reverted to his classic style and and again was manipulating certain people behind the scenes. So. But I think that I think they must have felt that okay, we, that worked so well as Loki the woman, but it's not working so well with him going back. So what else can we do? Right, and and Loki seemingly died in the story Siege, but then came back not too long afterwards as a child, and he's basically been reborn as a child. And now you go back to Thor's idea of maybe we can reform him, yes. maybe we can teach him Thor's differently. Thor's the only one in Asgard who thinks this is a good idea. Right, right? everyone yeah. else is just like, look, it's Loki, he's going to become evil again. Just give him a few years, he'll grow up to be an evil man. Yeah. Right now he's an evil boy well, who doesn't realize journey it. Journey into mystery, that's one of the most interesting things. The, uh, the abuse and yeah. the mistrust that Loki, as a little child, has to go through. And also Loki doesn't remember his old self. Right. I think the character knows he has a destiny and he's fighting it, but he's trying not to be that evil person. But I like Loki as a boy. I think he, he's a little bit of a ripoff of Damian Wayne. Uh, it, it's yeah. hard not to compare bratty kids yeah, to each well, other. Yeah, well, also with, you know, oh, la raised by League of Assassins, sure. former trickster god. Right. You know, they look very similar. They have the same kind of attitude. Right. But I like both of them. I, I, know, I, I can't think, get enough of the character. I think Loki as a child is, is very interesting. Because, again, you, you're approaching, you know, if, if this were a human character, I think a lot of us would be like, well, yeah, just raise him differently and it'll be okay. But because it is... A magical character. It is a, a yeah. Norse god who has destiny and who, you know, prophecy is in their blood and cosmic forces are connected to them. You have to wonder, like, is he trapped in this role he's supposed to play? No, I agree. But uh, one of the things that you brought up that I think is interesting at the end of Siege, as usual, Loki's like, I've made a horrible mistake, yeah. Thor. I don't want you to die. I'm going to save everybody. It makes me wonder. You think that'll happen in the movie? I can definitely see that happening where in, at the end of the Avengers film, he has some kind of Last remorse minute, yeah. moment or, or realizes things have gone too far or he's unleashed an army that he can't control anymore. I hope anymore. he doesn't die and turn into a little boy. They're not going to get rid of Tom Hiddleston. Probably not. Yeah, he's, he's, he's too, too good. popular. He's too good. The ladies yeah. love him. <laughs> and the guys like him. I think that's yeah. unusual. You know, he's a character, you know, he's not like, it's not like they put like a Robert Pattinson uh, in the Loki right. armor and they were like, oh, what do you guys think of this? You know, I think that uh, Tom Hiddleston really walks that, that middle line. But, uh, you know, it's interesting, but as we were saying in, in, in this movie, he's front and center. He's owning yes. what he's doing in this movie. He's Absolutely. not behind the scenes. What do you think of that change? He's not a trickster god. I think it's very interesting. I think it's going to be, be a, a nice twist on it. And what I, what I like, though, is that from everything we're seeing, even though he's not behind the scenes anymore, he's also still acting through agents. He's apparently brought an army. Yeah. Which we believe are aliens, according to Lego boxes. Right. I would like to make sure that Loki, if he wants to have a change of heart, fine. But I want him to be leading the army. Right. I don't like when right. Loki is just made a fool of. Right. And is manip I don't want him to be ma being manipulated himself because right. it, it no, takes away from the character. I you know? agree. So if people like Loki, they can go pick up Journey into Mystery to get Teen Loki, right? Or maybe you know, do you think at any point the comic book, the Marvel comic books, will bring him up to being the Loki he is now, like the anti-hero? I, I can see that easily happening. Because Thor 2 is coming. Yes. There will be a Thor 2. Yes. And I'm sure Loki will be a big part of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs>